Hi, Elsie. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Hi. Hi. Oh, good. Well. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Okay. I, so I'm going to back your it. top, by the way. Oh it's my very gosh. Cute. Thank Sorry. No, I appreciate that. It's like a rental thing. So I, I'm oh, happy ooh. you said that. <laughs> Nice. Thank you. <laughs> so I want to back it up to the first time you saw the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre and what went through your mind when you saw it. Elsie, do you remember the first time you saw it? I think I probably was like 12 or 13 and my dad was like, hey, look at this cool movie. It looks fun. It's from the 70s. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then I saw it and I was like. So, um, you know, again, changed the trajectory of my life but now in two different ways. And I think that's very special. So yeah, but mostly traumatized me, but I love it. So yeah. I thought it was a true story. Sarah, do you, do you remember the first time you oh, saw it? Horrible. It was um, like, I think like pre, like you couldn't just go Google things really easily. So it was like in the beginning, it was like based on true story or whatever. And you're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, you're like, yeah, it is. Yeah. So I don't watch horror movies. I'm scared of mostly everything. I'm scared of the dark. Like I don't watch them. And so I made a pact to myself that I wasn't going to force myself to watch the movies unless I got the role. And so then I got the role and I was like, I guess I got to watch this. And I sat down and it was horrifying. I was like, am I going to go do this? And it's also just like such a notorious, like epic movie, like iconic in so many ways, the grain, like all of the grit of it. Um, so I was really excited, but also so traumatized, just like holding my dog crying. So land a role like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the new one, what do you have to do in your audition? What is, what is like the, do they, do they say, hey, let's hear your scream. Do you have to scream your head off? What is that like? It was originally, I, there were three scenes I remember and they weren't, none of them were really in the, what we ended up shooting. I guess there'd been a lot of edits. So the three scenes that they were mostly like not, they weren't screaming. Um, the third scene, I remember your character's name was like deep another name and I was oh, interesting. Like, screaming yeah. for her being worried but I wasn't like it wasn't the majority of this movie which is me like under a bed crying screaming so it wasn't that so maybe they just like saw me and had a feeling I could thrive in that kind of environment I don't know uh, but it wasn't <laughs> the majority of the audition first of all it's very interesting to hear about Sarah's because I think I came probably one of the latest in the process um, cause I only auditioned maybe like a week and a half out before I was like flying out to go shoot it. But I knew it was, I knew it was, um, part of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but none of my audition sides were really the horror part. I think they were all drama. It was like us walking down the stairs after I'm with Richter and like me saying, I don't want to live there. And like, I think maybe you want other one. Um, so then it was very f funny because I I've done a little bit of horror stuff, but like, you know, I don't know. They just, you know, yeah, it was fun. How did you react when you found out you landed the lead roles in Texas Chainsaw Massacre? It's such an iconic franchise. People love it so much. Elsie, how did you react? What did you say? Who did you tell? My agent called me um, and she was just like, you're going to shoot this. And I was super thrilled, um, especially just because like, I, you know, it's always so um, lovely when you're able to land a movie and work just in general. Um, and obviously this is like a super big deal and very fun, but also it was like mid 2020. And I think everyone had pretty much just been locked in their houses for months at this point. Um, so it's like, oh my God, I get to like go do stuff. Like sets are even going. Um, so it was very good. It was very good and very big. And just all those emotions combined. <laughs> well, so I auditioned February like 28th, 2020. And then wow. had kind of been told that it was going my way, but nothing had been signed. And then COVID happened. So then for four months, I kind of went crazy and like lived in a yurt and like bought a dog, like totally just like went on an emotional roller coaster, being like, did I just get this epic role or not? Like, I'm going crazy. So then finally, months later, it was only delayed like a couple months actually. They, you know, it came back around and I got the call from my agents and I was like, so just like relieved and excited that I did get to do the yeah. thing that I thought I was going to get to do months before. And especially during COVID and getting to travel, you know, we were in Bulgaria and you know, though we were under all the COVID restrictions, getting to be in a new country during COVID while we weren't even allowed to travel anywhere was such a, yeah, it was amazing. I was so happy. So you two play sisters, you're shooting in Bulgaria. 
How did you bond on your downtime? Was there anything special that you two did together to kind of solidify your bond? I don't know how much downtime we actually ended up having because I think the both of us were maybe on set pretty much almost every day filming. So there was a lot of sleeping when we were off and then when we were on, just like in hair and makeup, getting covered in blood and fake poo and everything and just like going crazy, but together. So yeah. that was really beautiful. And I think how most families bond mm -hmm. anyways. So it felt, it felt very real. Getting covered in blood together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what me and my brother always no, do. So. Same, totally. Not it was a super rigorous shooting schedule. So like when we weren't shooting, I was like trying to take a walk um, or sleep. But yeah. I, was, I mean, there were these nights, Elsie and I had these long night shoots under the rain machine in winter going crazy, like losing our minds covered in blood and glycerin and soaking wet and some poop and, you know, all the elements and keeping each the other. Four the, blood, the four elements, blood, the four main elements, poo, water, water, fire, poop. <laughs> um, um, I think we kept each other. I mean, I know you kept me sane a lot of that and awake and, you know, not freezing by kind of doing bits over and over. Yeah, yeah, that's all I can do. I'm just like a, they don't hire me because I'm good. They hire me because I'm like funny off camera. You know, I'm the court jester of films. Elsie, so. I gotta say, your Twitter is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> like, genuinely very funny. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, it's my magnum opus and the best thing I will ever achieve. <laughs> um, and it's really bad, and I'm glad you like it. Thank you. Mm. I, I love good good posting. It's great. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> now Leatherface. We got to talk about Leatherface. Obviously, one of the freakiest horror villains of all time. What were your interactions like with Mark Burnham between takes? Was he freaky on set, or does he fall out of character? What what happens between takes? There wasn't much hanging out. Like I mean, especially with COVID stuff. Yeah. Like it was kind of like I'm going to my area and he's going to his, and he's such a hulking figure. It was no matter what we did offset, like talking or not, he's going to be horrifying in that mask. Like it's horrifying. Yeah. And I think there, there wasn't probably a lot of taking the mask on and off because, um, you know, I think that would, it was a whole process. I mean, we just stayed in like regular blood and he had this whole like thing on him. So I'm sure it's very like a lot to deal with. Um, I did talk to him on our plane ride into the country though, before we started shooting. And it was very sweet because we bonded over me, like having um, a book of like Bulgarian phrases or something to right. try and familiarize myself with the country and the language. Um, yeah, so he was he was very nice. We, I think we just didn't get to talk too much because there was a whole lot of stuff going on. Now, Sarah, you're part of another horror fave, the Happy Death Day franchise. It's one of my favorites. There have been rumblings for years about the third installment, but now it feels like it's actually kind of close, maybe happening. There keeps being hints. Do you think, have you heard anything? Do you think- Oh, no, but uh, tell me more, what? I would love you know, to. Jason Blum does interviews and every once in a while people say, where's Happy Death Day 3? And he keeps saying, it's coming, but no timeline, no idea. I, I'll call Chris and be like, yeah, what's up? Yes. I mean, I'm really close with Rachel Matthews and I'm still in touch with the whole cast. It was such an incredible experience. And we constantly are like, do we think we're going to get to do another? It was just like fun hanging out. Like it felt like fun. But again, that was a horror comedy. I don't feel like... It, it was such a different experience, I will say, shooting this movie versus that, because that mm. was like fun and games. And like, I don't remember even being in a scary part of the movie. And this was like not fun and games. <laughs> so this is like a totally different- Very, experience. yeah, very yeah. intense. Do you, lastly, do you have a favorite Easter egg in the movie that Eagle Eye fans should be watching out for? There were a lot of little character choices I definitely made to like try and be like, hoo, hoo, hoo. Um, I mean, I the, the one Easter egg that does come to mind that's um, kind of fun is um, the, oh, I don't know if it counts as e Easter egg, sorry. I'm like, train of thought. Anyways, but I get to, I pick up a cowboy hat at the end and put it on and that was my idea and it was pretty fun. Um, and it's a little bit of a reference to uh, David Blue Gar uh, Garcia, the director's like last movie. Um, so that was kind of fun to type that in. I think this is an Easter egg. I'm not sure it counts as an Easter egg, so I'm gonna go. Um, in the theater, there's like a movie theater scene and David Blue Garcia, his movie Tejano, they they were able to print like a- Yeah. 
uh, yeah, right? Like his movie poster in this inside the theater. And then like you walk, your character walks by it, which I think is super funny. And then also, I don't know if you noticed this, Elsie, but in when we're like swiping on our phones, um, and it, and we're looking at who liked it, what? Oh no, it's when Shin is holding the, and he's like, if you, if you do this, like we're gonna, you're gonna get canceled, whatever, on the bus holding his phone. And you see the live Instagram live and the names are like Fede. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was oh, like also, laughing pretty hard. That's an Easter egg though, is, Shin, like the the main guy on the bus who has the phone talk, is one of our producers. Yeah, um, and he was with us the whole time. You know, I great love guy. that he made and it was trailer. hilarious. So funny, it's hilarious that he's in this. <laughs> well, I gotta wrap it up, but I will say that bus scene was pretty iconic. <laughs> oh my god, right?